hoki mai e te iwi and welcome back to Inside Netball. Ko Ravinda Hunia tō ingoa. And joining me today is former Silver Fern captain Aideen Wilson and former Northern Stars vice captain Storm Purvis. Kia ora korua. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Now look, Aideen, I love seeing you every single week, but this is Storm's first show back for a little while since your trip to Tokyo. <laughs> How was that trip? It looked absolutely amazing. It was amazing. Like there's really no other words to describe it really. It was a experience of a lifetime, without a doubt, a career highlight, probably across the netball and broadcasting, across both careers. It's just been an absolute highlight in my life. Um, really cool to interview such a huge range of athletes from all sorts of different sports and countries and yeah, a real learning curve, but um, incredible. Yeah. It's good to be back though. <laughs> oh my God. When I was watching Storm, oh, you did such an awesome job, but I kept crying the whole time. I constantly was in tears watching the Olympics. How did you keep it together when you were interviewing some of these athletes? Um, a couple of times I really didn't. I think it was my Lydia Co interview and she was bawling her eyes out just off camera and we had to pull her over in front of our spot. And you can kind of hear me with the microphone. I'm like, okay, Lydia. And you can hear like me trying to compose myself with the mic. I was like, damn it, Storm. Good to know next time. Just keep the mic away and then bring it back when you're ready to go. Because you can blatantly hear me kind of sobbing a little bit in the background. But um, everyone was an emotional mess over there. It was just the type of games that they were. There was a lot of emotion attached to it. So I'm not surprised you were crying at home, Deanie. <laughs> Talking about that though, Storm, you know, you talk about it being quite emotional. There were a lot of, you know, athletes that couldn't make it. There are a lot of countries that have struggled with COVID-19. How was that aspect of the games? Yeah, it was different. I mean, lucky for me, I think I was the only one there who hadn't done any international um, experience with working in these kind of situations in the first place or in the international events. So I had nothing to kind of compare it to. Um, obviously never done an Olympics or a Commonwealth Games like everyone else had. So everyone was like, oh, this is so different and we have to do this and it's so much harder to do this. And everything logistically was really hard um but because i had nothing to compare it to i was kind of just going with the flow and just amazed at everything so i was probably in quite a lucky um situation that i just yeah i just had to go with it and it was it was fine but yeah we were wearing masks literally everywhere in like 40 degree heat that was pretty tough um interviewing people with a boom pole you know two meters away was pretty yeah. tough as well trying to get emotion and, and connection with the people you're interviewing so it was challenging, but like I said, incredible. Well, despite everything, all of the adversity storm, I second what Adine said. I think you absolutely nailed it, but you side netball far no proud. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to be back talking about netball, but thank you guys. Yeah, it's kind of just um, really going with it there, but now I can talk about something <laughs> I can genuinely say I know about. So let's get the netball <laughs> chat started. <laughs> well, on that note, you nailed it, and so too have the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. They have secured their 10 for 2022, announcing that Katrina Rore will leave the polls after over a decade in the yellow dress to move up north uh, to join the Magic. Now, predictions have been here on our podcast for a few weeks now, uh, a la Anna Stanley. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we've, we've, so I think we've had a bit of time to kind of simmer on the idea, but what are our thoughts now that it's out there in the universe? Well, look, I think it's a fascinating one because, um, I mean, amazing pickup for the magic. But for me, you know, Katrina has ticked everything off. She's got a World Cup. She's got a Commonwealth Gold. She's won a Suncorp. She's won a Premiership. Um, she's ticked everything off. So, you know, I'd be fascinated to know what is it? What is it that's drawn her back, that made her want to keep playing netball? Because her trophy cabinet's pretty damn full. I think it's it's great for the Magic. I'm getting an experienced player and like you say, Dean, someone who has won everything because obviously this franchise has struggled over the years and I really feel like they need that injection of confidence and someone who can run a tight ship, who can lift the fitness standards, who can bring her experience and a winning culture to a team. Um, so it's great to see her back. And if anyone could come back from a baby i know we don't want to put pressure on this situation at all but she is obviously always been one of the fittest and most hardworking players so it's it's really no surprise to see her back on court um so soon but super excited to see how it all plays out yeah it seems to be a little pattern emerging with our mamas they just pop in the mountain they're jumping back on court just like that it's nice for some <laughs> but you know if anyone can move into an environment and bring that 
you know, that winning culture or help to establish that winning ways of a franchise. That's most definitely Katrina Rory, isn't it? I remember when, I mean, years ago, 2010, she signed to the Pulse. And the year before 2009, the Pulse had only won one game. And, you know, she stayed there with the Pulse all those years and, and saw it to its glory uh, with a vet. Can't forget about the Commonwealth Games in 2018 when the Silver Ferns, you know, hit that, that pit uh, of their international tenure and, and then she was there with the World Cup as well. So who better to have than Katrina Rory who knows literally what it's like um, starting from the bottom and now she's here. And she's brought two of her mates, two of her good mates too, right? Claire yeah. Kirsten and Amelia and Ekanasio. So, I mean, they've all just swapped the coloured dress a little bit, right? So Mary Jane Araroa is obviously a very good negotiator because she has pulled together a spectacular team. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And, and a lot of leaders in that team as well. So if Sam Winders is named captain again, which I imagine she will be, she certainly deserves to be, um, she's going to have a, a big crew of experience to call on when she needs it which i think will be great for sam as well because we you know how many times this year did we joke about having to do those interviews with sam after every loss and she fronted up every time you know credit to her but that's got to take its toll on you mentally as a player and just trying to um rejuvenate your team week in and week out and she lives and breathes this magic side you know you can't really see anyone else being the captain of the side while she's around so i think it's going to be great for her to have the likes of Amelia and um, Katrina Bailey Mears, another one who brings a wealth of experience just surrounding Sam and, and helping to lift this franchise because for a few years now I've kind of found them as a team that I don't really understand their brand or, or how to describe them or you know you can think of other teams in this franchise uh, in this competition sorry and, and really easily kind of pull them out and know how they play and what they're about and I still feel like Magic are just in this little limbo process trying to sort that out so hopefully bringing these names in is going to really rejuvenate the team yeah something that keeps um coming up in conversation as you know the magic's former glory days that was 2012 when they took out the anz championship you know they had the corpors the langmans and the van dykes and you know with those three pillars there the youth that were coming through you know pretty much had the best role models, the best environment. So how imperative is it? You know, it looks like the Magic are going back to that to perhaps rebuild that way again. And that's that's an awesome way to build a team, right? To have the experience core in those key positions and then build around. And we've seen that with the Ferns, we've seen it with a lot of successful teams. So I think it's very, very clever of Mary Jane and the Magic franchise. And like you said, you've got to give the Magic credit. They've had a tough year, you know, financially. It's been exceptionally tough for the Magic. They've had their challenges. So the way they've been able to negotiate this pull it together is just a real um, amazing that they've been able to achieve it. But like you said, Storm, I think that was a really good way of thinking about it. What is the Magic's brand? You know, what is it the style of play they play like or want to play like? And the other big challenge for me is how are they still going to cope with a team from the sounds of it that are all sped, spread sorry, throughout the Waikato and the Bay of Plenty? You know, we all know that there's certainly challenges when you've got a team that's not centralised, but you've got to balance that with this is a semi-professional sport. You can't force everyone to move to one city. People have got lives and jobs within their own regions, but I do think that's been a particular challenge for the Magic. I guess they need to kind of figure out a way as to figure out how they can harness that as their point of difference, that they do live these lives, that some of them are mums, they're spread all over the show, working, living, whatever. How do they kind of harness that, that when they come together, they're this incredible unit and they make the most of their training and their time together and kind of make that the bigger deal and instead of saying oh man this really affects us that we're also spread out turn it into yes we're spread out but we can turn this into a a bonus for us so that when we are together and training and playing it's 100 percent we make the most of this time um i'm not sure i'm sure mj will be all over her approach um for the team going forward but things to think about for sure and i think also this will help bolster you know any fans who perhaps fell off the bandwagon any sponsorships who you know perhaps questioned about ongoing um, financial support, names like this will definitely help the team on and off the court, wouldn't it? 
Oh, absolutely. When you've got superstars in your team, you know, it straight away attracts people to come and watch the games. But that might get them in the door. You've got to keep them there. And that's where you've got to play these exciting styles of netball. You've got to win. People love winners. There's no doubt about it. So if you're winning, you're going to get more bums on seats as well. So I think they've got a good challenge ahead of them. And you don't have to look at, you know, the Mystics this year, the style of play they were playing. It drew people in. They wanted to see it. They wanted to see those magical um, passes that were coming from Peter to Grace and, and the crowd followed. Just going to flip this all on its head a little bit because we've talked about how well the franchise has done recruiting these players and it is great. But the alarming thing that stands out for me and the balance of the team is where are the wing attacks? Who's going to play wing attack? Adine, as a former wing attack yourself in that um, lineup of 10, who do you see playing wing attack? Well, you know, the only one for me at the moment that I look at is Bailey Mess. And, you know, I'd actually really love to see her play in that position. I know she's been tried there before, but she's never really from my knowledge or my memory, started a season in that position. She's more being thrown in at different times when they've needed her. But if she had the opportunity to nail that down and, you know, once upon a time, that was my position, I played goal attack and moved into that wing attack role. And I think if you've got that background, when you know the spaces that you like to use in the circle as a goal attack, there's a massive help as a wing attack because you can see those spaces, you can see the places you want to put that ball. So. I would love to see her get the opportunity right from the start of the season, right from pre-season, that that's her position, that she's going to play wing attack because we all know her athleticism, we know what she can pick up on defence, and I think if she just got a, you know, a solid amount of time to concentrate on that position, you know, who knows what she can achieve. Yeah, I agree that Bailey definitely has a chance to step up and own a wing attack position. But then they've only got Amelia Anacanasio and Kiana Williams. They've got four wing Ds in this squad, really, with Katrina Lore, who can play wing D, Sam Winders, Claire Kirsten, and Georgie Edgecum. So for me, it almost looks like maybe MJ is expecting either Claire or Sam to play wing attack. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I just can't wait to see how it plays out. Very true, Storm. Great point you bring up there. Well, someone who can maybe answer a few of these questions is the new Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic recruit, Katrina Rore. Lilybad Maria Rore. Hey. Hello. <laughs> First public outing. Oh, she's so sweet. I just want to squeeze her. <laughs> Katrina, how has it been going? You're, a, you know, a new mum, basically, on this road back to elite netball. How have you found the journey so far? Oh, gosh. I haven't even started yet. So um, pre-season still... <laughs> thankfully still what like maybe three months away so I've got time on my hands which I'm very thankful for especially um with lockdown happening having no gym and we are at the moment staying with Joel's nan and granddad waiting for a house to be built so all of our gym equipment is in storage which is um awfully helpful but it just means I can hang out this one more so I'm okay with it really no, we know you're into your CrossFit poly um, prior to Lily Button. It looks like you're getting back into it again. Have you, is that kind of your preseason training at the moment? Just getting back. Yeah, definitely. That? It's um, probably about, I've done maybe four weeks worth of 6 a.m. classes. Just get up, um, feed her, go to class and come back before Joel gets, goes to work. And it's just, I don't know, nice to go somewhere where you don't have to think about what you have to do. And by yourself, you're with people. And it's quite cool being in a new, new neighborhood and meeting people as well, which is, I don't know, makes it that much easier. And um, with a new baby, we all know that sleep is hard to come by at times. Do you just want to strangle anyone now that doesn't have a baby that's just a young person that goes, I'm so tired? I, it's funny because before I had kids and people be like, oh, you've got no idea what tired is, but to be fair, tired is your own tired, right? I, it's a different tired. <laughs> we, we all get it. So I'm on both sides. I... I used to be tired before her and I'm awfully tired with her. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Katrina, talking about that, a young Fano, you've made the decision to move from Wellington to Waikato with Fano in tow. Talk to us about your decision to make the move. Um, not my decision, no. <laughs> and, uh, Joel's from um, Otoroa and he had uh, work lined up here and uh, we bought land a while ago and started building um, just a few delays with COVID and things. So we um, yeah, got pregnant and decided that we would definitely, definitely move here. Wasn't planning on coming back to netball at all, but now I'm done. Um, but now Lily's here and we're kind of 
cruising around and the passion's still there to play a bit of netball and um, it's what I absolutely love and I with this one it would be so cool to have her in the crowd and, and watch mum do what I suppose she used to do and it's I don't know seeing all these other mums come back it's such a good challenge but also it's quite I'm hoping you can see other um, I don't know other mothers are coming into it knowing that they can you know come back and do whatever they want to do as well they're not just hampered just because you know they have a kid and then you, all you are as a mother that's definitely not definitely not it hey, <laughs> I can't think back that Did you long oh my goodness <laughs> <Did they? laughs> yeah no it's very cool it's so cool and I do think um you do have a lot of pride when you come back of that first one and be prepared for it to be quite emotional as well I remember feeling quite emotional when I got back on the court and thought I've made it. I've made it here. I can't believe it. What a journey it's been. Um, but, you know, you have achieved so much, Katrina. You have achieved gold medals, World Cups, Suncorp, um, winning that, winning the Premiership. You know, what was it that finally just said to you, no, stuff it. I want to give this another go. I do really want to do it because I remember it being a really tough decision. Yeah, I, like I said, I honestly thought I was done. I was like, I've done everything. I kind of have achieved a lot. I'm like, like my career's been awesome. So many, obviously, ups and downs, but heaps of ups. Um, and I was like, if I come back, what is it? I have got nothing to prove. Um, it's just, you know, am I going to come back and look like a fool? <laughs> you know, coming back as older and a mum, and am I going to be as fit? Am I going to be as strong? Can I even play anymore? Um, but then it's another achievement to have Lily and play in front of her and I think that's something that I haven't done and which I obviously which I would like to do. And if we get down to the nitty-gritty of it you have signed with the magic um super exciting news great to see you in those colors poll but so many of your mates in there too um can you talk to us about the signing process for you? Smart option wasn't it? <laughs> Don't play with all your mates. Was that I, a driving I, yeah. force? Yeah that definitely was um uh, another reason why I wanted to come back because I wanted to go out there, enjoy myself and play with my mates. Why not go to work every day and have your friends around and you just have a really good time, um, which means it doesn't feel like work. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. We, a few of us definitely talked about it before we all signed <laughs> and said, how cool would it be if we all played in the same team? Um, yeah. New environment, just everything new about it and a new challenge for all of us, which um, yeah, I reckon it's just going to be fun. It's a new move for you, Katrina, but I remember in an interview or in a corridor or you and I had, I think it was lockdown last year, you spoke about possibly signing to the Magic a few years back. Um, mm, what, that's right, yeah. has, has it kind of been in the back of your mind that you could eventually end up at the Magic anyway? Yeah, it's always, um, the back plan is always somewhere where we knew we would end up eventually. Um, we did think we were going to be here a few years ago. Uh, it was very, very close to moving here a few years ago. We even had an offer on a house. Uh, and that fell through, which ended up being probably a bit of a blessing. Um, going back to Wellington and doing um, Joel and I having a good time there and then moving now. So I feel like this is probably the right time for us to be uh, in the Bay um, and starting a new chapter. Mary Jane is going to be your new coach. Um, what sort of conversations have you had with her? And, and have you had any relationship with her prior to this signing? I, I do know MJ, but not very well at all. Um, <laughs> have had a few discussions um yeah yarned on the phone obviously just trying to work out logistics and whether the environment was for me and what MJ was planning on doing and if it was all going to be okay um because I needed it to work for my family um and you know otherwise it was just not a possibility but yeah MJ a defensive coach um and have heard from players in the magic with her being assistant coach that she does know what she's doing um and she's you know um includes the includes the family things as well so she doesn't mind too much so yeah massive to be fair most of our chats have been how lily can fit in in our environment awesome Paul. and again me with the nitty-gritty questions what position are you hoping to play there's quite a few wing d's on the roster i see um yeah a few wing d's i don't i honestly don't mind um i think they need a wing attack too right so who knows <laughs> So you with the wing attack. Your hand. <laughs> I have had a few people message me um, and going, why have they signed you? Why not a wing attack? I'm like, I don't know. Ask the <laughs> There's your mate. Do you know if Claire's wanting to play wing attack, maybe? He seems like a natural kind of option. <laughs> I might I might give Lily to man because I can't hear anything. <laughs> 
Oh, she's so sweet, isn't she? She wants to answer the question now. <laughs> she just wants a yarn, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? Mama. <laughs> I think I asked if um if you think Claire could slot into that wing attack position. She seems like my natural pick, I think. Not that I know anything about attack, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, me either. She she did play wing attack for the pulse in one game. And yeah, she was definitely like, hmm, that's a lot different. I thought she did a darn good job of it. Um I think it was against the tactics in our last round robin game, which we lost the year we won it. So um yeah, that was, yeah, she did a great job, but it'll be interesting to see if it was her or maybe Sammy or maybe Bailey. Mm. Yeah, even I need to probably look at the team a bit more and <laughs> go meet all my mates. Switch back on. Um, the Magic obviously had a season that um, they were hoping to do better in, and 2022 with these signings obviously gives them that hope with names such as yourself. You've been in situations like this before where you've joined a team that isn't doing too well, so what are you hoping to bring to the table? Yeah, I definitely have been in a situation before of a team who haven't won many games, but I think um, with the roster that are coming in, that um, a lot of experience is coming in. I know that I'm not the oldest by a lot. <laughs> I know there's a few over 30s. And I think experience helps a lot in those situations. Players who know how to win um, I know, and can hopefully bring that down, filter that down to other players, a few young ones in there, but I think it's a good mix of young and experience so we can all learn off each other. Um, it is good for us uh, oldies to have some youngies around to really freshen things up. Um, but then also hopefully we can... Um, show our experience and uh, teach them how to win and wanting to win and maybe a little bit more of a training base and learning how your body works and um, how you can push yourself that much further and both physically and mentally as well. The ANZ Premiership next year, it basically finishes and the Commonwealth Games are oh so close, only in July. Is the black dress, have you given it any thought, is it the ultimate goal? Oh, it's definitely a thought. I have yarned to Knowles a couple of times about it and um, if it's there or not. I knew this year definitely wasn't an, uh, going into the Ferns was definitely not an option for me. I'm not ready at all and I'm not someone to want to push my myself, I know, too soon and not be ready. Um, so yeah, I'll do ANZ first <laughs> and see, see how the body holds up, see if I still got it, see if the passion's still there seeing if it works for my family. It is in Birmingham. COVID is around as well. So there's so many um, so many factors to kind of um, look at and understand and really go from there. There's a few of you young mums floating around at the moment, Phoenix, yeah. Kayla. I mean, how much contact have you had with them? Do you have sort of mum Zoom sessions or anything? I feel like we should probably have a chat because I do talk to them a lot. Um, just messaging really of um, asking for even a little bit of advice of what did you do with your baby when this happened and this and training wise. And um, I know Phoenix has probably got it a bit tough at the moment with Pat going away and trying to fit in training and Kayla's in, in ISO and MIQ. Um, and talking to Mills as well with, um, you know, with her going into just training now during pregnancy. I think when I signed, she messaged me, she said, oh, I can't wait to go out and train. I'm like, just relax. You can just, you know, take it easy until after baby and then you can come back and sort it out. And of course, as we know now, we're going to see a lot of those Magic players in the upcoming Tiny Jamison Trophy Series when the Silver Ferns take on the England Roses. Wahine Ma, how exciting is it that we're going to have international netball here in Aotearoa later this month. <laughs> yeah, big fingers crossed. Everyone across the country, please cross your fingers that this goes ahead. I mean, even in level two, right, I think we can still make it go ahead in Christchurch. Of course, all the games will be down there starting on the 20th of September. Um, I'm so excited. I feel like this chart kind of crept up on us so quickly, maybe because I was in Tokyo and had other things on my mind, but it's so nice to come home and be greeted straight away to some international netball. Um, I think this English squad, is really exciting. There's a whole lot of names there. The shooting circle in particular, I'm very excited to see out there after following the um, Vitality Super Netball League over in the UK a little more closely this year. Um, there's some exciting players and that league is actually stronger than I remember it being or was expecting it to be. So I can't wait to see a lot of these girls on the court. Yeah, aren't we lucky? We're so lucky that this was locked in pretty early in the year. So there was MIQ spots already in place for these English players. It wasn't like all of a 
sudden uh, Netwear New Zealand were having to scramble for a place for these girls to get here. But it's certainly been a challenge for these English players. They've already done quarantine in New Zealand. They were here last year in October against the Silver Ferns. And we've got a number of players um, that are either here that have come from Australia, Jeeva Mentor, she's one that's had to you know, meet the team in Singapore and then fly to New Zealand. And then they're going to have a few extra players that will meet um, the English side when they get to Australia. But you've got to take your hat off to some of these players and the lengths they've gone to um, to play a sport they love. So I can't wait to see this English team out there. They've got some big names that are here. Serena Guthrie, we all know how good um, a player she is. She's going to be up against the Ferns. Jay Clark, another player that's played in both New Zealand, Australia, and now back in England. So there's certainly a lot of talent in this English team. And, and I think they'll push the Silver Ferns. Yeah, sometimes I feel like we push it in terms of having the big names for these end of year um, series. But with Commonwealth Games around the corner, you're going to take any international court time you can get, surely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we forget that they are just around the corner, the Commonwealth Games. Another thing that's, that seemed to have come up so quickly. So, yeah, I think in, in a, from a firm's perspective, there's a lot of question marks over players. We've talked about lots of players coming back from injury and, and babies. Um, so it's going to be a really fascinating series for the Ferns and, and Nolene Total's approach to the games as well. Um, so, yeah, lo lots of question marks. And I guess we won't know until we see that first team out there on September the 20th. But with all the lockdown levels at the moment, I mean, are, are the Ferns even able to train? Are they able to be in camps? How's that going to work? How are they going to get to Christchurch? Will they be really underprepared when they hit the court? Oh, there's a lot of questions. So many questions, so many questions, so <laughs> many moving parts, right? And, you know, we've heard that the, the team are keeping connected via Zoom. They're doing, you know, sessions via Zoom and all of those bits and pieces. But it cannot be easy, you know, having to do your training at a makeshift gym in the garage or out the back on a lawn. And, and Storm, I think you did had to do a bit of that last year for the stars and, you know, gosh, I get out with the kids and play a bit of basketball, but I'd hate to think what it would take to motivate yourself when you're in your own little bubble in your house, but know you've got an international game coming up in, what is it, less than a month. I guess the fact that they do have an international game coming up in less than a month it would be motivation enough, knowing that that is going ahead or at least telling yourself that that will be going ahead. I will be hitting the court against a pretty strong-looking England international side. So I don't think motivation will be an issue, but it's just making sure that the load and the intensity of this training that they're doing is at um, the level it needs to be. I know we struggled with the ANZ Premiership last year trying to implement um, change of direction into your training because it's all very well you know, running five metres, turning right, running five metres, turning left. But when you're in a netball court, you don't think which way you're going. You just have to adjust and do it. And that's where you see a lot of the ACL and Achilles injuries. So things like um, getting your partner to throw a ball randomly anywhere or, or using a wall or a, an odd shaped, a rugby ball even, and really mixing up things to try and get those movements. And it's actually so much more challenging than it sounds than just getting out there and going for a run or throwing a ball against a wall. There's, there's a whole lot of elements to add to it. So I take my hats off to the girls if they if they come out firing and looking good on the 20th. Well, thinking about that, to be fair, for England, Commonwealth Games, they're looking to retain their crown, aren't they? How much do you think is, not maybe on their shoulders, but how much are they out to prove that they can beat the world champion Silver Ferns and be contenders again for a gold medal at the Com Games? Yeah, I guess it's on their own soil again, isn't it? So um, that's going to be a big motivator for them. They obviously felt like they failed with the Netball World Cup when that was in England in 2019. And you could all see, we could all see the disappointment on the likes of Joe Harden's face. Um, I didn't mean to laugh just then, that was mean. Um, uh, in that uh, semi-final. So um, I think... Look, they, they will want to do well. They will want to defend that title. I mean, any English side in any tournament or situation comes in with a lot of confidence and a lot of belief, and they always, you know, want to do well. We know this about England netball. So it'll be, um, yeah, really interesting to see their approach in this series. I guess um, selections aside, obviously with New Zealand, we don't have the likes of Joe Harton, um, Haythorn Thwaite, and a few other Helen Houseby key players here because they're resting after the Suncorp Super Netball. So the side that we see play in New Zealand will be a different side to the one we see play in Australia. But at the same time, I guess that gives um, 
England management and coaches time to have a look at, at a, a range of players, which is really important leading into the Com Games. Yeah, and they're lucky, right? The fact that they get to play here in New Zealand and then they are heading to Australia. So they're going to get to play Australia as well. I mean, those are the two teams you want to play if you're England leading into a Commonwealth Games. Um, we did play them, the Silver Ferns, back in October last year. It was a clean sweep for the Silver Ferns, but I do get the sense that this is a stronger English side this year. So I think it will be more of a challenge. But you know, any international netball, any opportunities you get at the moment, you've just got to take them with two hands. And English know they've got locked in that that series against Australia. Silver Ferns-wise, we don't know. You know, at the moment, um, the dates are there for a Constellation Cup in October. But whether we can get there, whether they can get here, that's just going to be a massive challenge. And whether, you know, if it can't go ahead, it goes back to playing the New Zealand men. But like any sport at the moment, such a challenge to try to think laterally about how you get the experience, how you get people on court while juggling um, the COVID situation. Well, one player who hasn't had to worry about travel or restrictions or quarantine for this series is Southern Steel's shooter George Fisher. Of course, she was an England import and has been named to play in the England Roses, and we caught up with her earlier. Um, obviously, like the my Steel season is prepping me massively for the upcoming tour because the players that I played all season are going to be the players that I'll be playing now. So I, fi- I, I feel pr- pretty good about it in the, in the fact that I'm like, right, I've played you guys. That's some like real good prep. I kind of like got an idea obviously like Jane's just had surgery so obviously she won't be kicking around but obviously like the likes of Sulu and stuff um and I always I always enjoy butting up against her so I think it's prepped me very well in the fact that I've had a few more more games against them a little bit more time but then that also means they've had that against me too so they're going to kind of know what to do with me just as much as I think I know what to do with them (laughs) but no it definitely prepped me loads um and also just like playing in front of like, I don't know whether we will have crowds and things like that, but um, obviously like playing with the bigger crowds and having that like whole match day experience of like a big match uh, definitely helps you prep differently. Because normally when we come to play internationals, it's like completely different. Whereas I feel like a lot of the ANZ games bring in like the similar sort of crowd. So that's, that's pretty cool. It's kind of like more prep than you'd think, even like the smaller things. Yeah, that's such a good point. Something that you've had that your English teammates wouldn't have had back home. Um, on that, they're all in Christchurch and MIQ at the moment. When do you link up with them? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I don't know just yet. We're kind of working on a few things. Obviously, we have like lockdown and, and levels and things like that. So as I said, I'm kind of based right now near Tauranga because originally that was kind of the plan that was me based around here. But obviously with everything and like it's very fluid so just trying to work on getting like get myself down there so not sure just yet but hopefully not too long so I can join up with them and annoy them all again. How are you staying connected with the team in the meantime is there any training sessions that you're having to do online or is it just keeping connected through Instagram or messaging or yeah how are you keeping that connection going? Um so yeah we have like an untold amount of zooms like three a day sometimes for um we snapchat each other we annoy each other we message each other yeah like to be fair like they probably thought I was going to get rid of me when I left but now I still message them like all through the season just annoying them all um so yeah we keep in pretty good contact and like as a group of girls we get on really well which is quite nice um even though it's like a real random group of ages and coming from different areas and interests we actually get on pretty good which is which is good so yeah been keeping in contact just through any means possible. <laughs> on the note of these international games coming up, of course, we're going to see them all here on Sky Sport. But Adine, you were actually a part of an announcement this week and uh, made it on TV, not in this space, but in another space. Tell us a bit more about it. <laughs> yes, it was awesome to announce this week that Sky's partnering with TVNZ as the free-to-air partner. So the whole English series, all three games, will be played um, on TV2. Um, and they're going to be delayed. Um, And then also, fingers crossed, as we keep going, if the Constellation Cup goes ahead, then all of those games will actually be live on TVNZ as well as on Sky. So, I mean, the massive 
point of this is it's building that fan base. It's supporting women's sport and the importance of women's sport. And Sky have always been exceptionally passionate about that. So I think this is really exciting for netball because the more we can grow that fan base and engagement, the more people are going to link into the sport, the more people are going to play the sport, the more people that are going to follow the social media posts of our superstar athletes. So I think it's a really cool initiative by Sky. Yes, very well done, Adine. You've always been quite the ambassador for the sport at every level, so thank you so much. And on that note, ladies, as I mentioned, the International Netball, when it is played, will of course be here live on Sky Sport. And of course, we'll be here to talk to you all about it. Kōrua, thank you so much for joining me this week on our virtual set. How did you find it? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it's it? Right. You're like, oh, it is weird. <laughs> yeah, it's been amazing. Like, <laughs> we love the technology. What other the the in the room thing. before I sign it off? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rav. It was great. <laughs> but thank you all for watching. Of course, we'll be back here next week, putting everything in netball into chat. Hey, Kona Mai. <laughs>